What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autodop and Al. My name is Max and today we finally got our hands on a Tesla Model X Plaid. Now we've been waiting for this car, well we've been waiting for the Model S Plaid to be honest but this was the first one uh, we were able to get here in the Netherlands. There have been a lot of delays and uh, well we have had to wait a long time but it is finally here the incredible 1000 plus horsepower plaid and today i'm going to review it i'm going to show you around it uh, we'll talk a bit about the facelift model x as well although tesla doesn't really do facelifts per se but they did incorporate a lot of updates recently so this is a big difference compared to the last model x we drove we'll check out the interior and then we'll take it for a drive towards the autobahn for an autobahn blast now the model x plaid is the crazy version 1000 plus horsepower as i said 1020 us horsepower but it is absolutely mega tri motor setup 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and the performance is just mind blowing it really is the model s of course is even faster uh 300 kilos lighter with the same powertrain but somehow it it just makes it that much sicker because it is a six seat supercar basically it's a, an mpv slash suv that goes from 0 to 100 in 2.6 seconds claimed by tesla we've done 2.8 and it does the quarter mile in 10 seconds so that is just so ridiculous uh, we've got this blue car today spec wise which i really like i think it suits the car very well and then all the details around the car have been blackened out nowadays as you know so that works a lot better than with all that chrome i think uh, it has a slightly revised front end as well it looks even sleeker than before we've got new headlights as well it's got an aerodynamic drag coefficient of 0.24 which is the best for any suv out there so it is a very slippery suv this car also has the optional 22 inch wheels these are the turbine wheels and they have gotten a little update as well because these little arrow blade thingies they they didn't used to be there so i i really like that i think it looks very cool around that we've got the continental sport contact six tires and uh well you do lose some range of course if you go from 20 the 20 inch cyber stream wheels are standard and uh, you lose about 30 kilometers of range if you go for the 22s behind that we've got the standard brakes now a lot has been said about this tesla said that they were going to add a carbon ceramic brake option with the plaid uh, because it had a top speed of 322 kilometers an hour well it took a while i think over a year but they are finally now starting to uh, roll out that update it is an aftermarket update so uh, you can order it at the dealer i think you have to do it after you have the car and it's a twenty thousand dollar option and we don't know anything about the model x yet so we don't know if that's coming to the model x as well but if they are going to raise the top speed uh, it's 262 right now they just rolled out an update for the model s that includes a track mode and it also raises the top speed to 280 kilometers an hour but if you're going to raise the top speed with this two and a half ton car i hope that they will add carbon ceramics as well now there is an option to do it aftermarket i have seen some companies online that offer carbon ceramic brakes like big brake kits for the model s and the model x plaid I think it's only the front brakes but uh, if you are planning on doing any track driving or autobahn driving or just do a lot of you know high speed stuff and a lot of runs and brakes you are going to need carbon ceramics it's just a fact so far these have done pretty well but you will absolutely fry them if you use this car's performance a lot like in a short period of time basically all right so door wise click the button all the doors open still very cool works both ways i think yeah falcon doors of course absolutely stunning still after i don't know how long it's been eight years still looks the business of course there are a lot of sensors in there to stop it from hitting stuff um, but we'll we'll check out the rear seats as well so model x plaid is only available with a six seat setup as you can see so you have these beautiful floating 
seats absolutely gorgeous with a lot of space in between i don't know why this is um i haven't found anything about that so if you know let us know in the comments but the long range version you can get that with a five six or seven seat setup uh, this is only available with six and we have the beige interior which is very nice like a cream super nice so this is new for the model x as well you have this screen here with your climate heated seats and then your media you have just have four apps netflix youtube disney plus and twitch super smart you hit youtube i mean we're in the middle of nowhere here so there's you know the internet is not great but it actually works really well and the quality is amazing uh, it's not very big but i think it's big enough especially for a couple of kids back here yeah this is amazing and it's super simple and it just works really well that's i think that is super smart and then we've got a couple of usb-c ports down there as well if we check out the rear seats i mean i don't think i'm going to fit here but these are adjustable as well so we put those a bit forward and then squeeze back here this is uh very cramped so this is for like children but you can also get those puppies down and you have a proper loading area so but it is very spacious it's very large and you, you feel like you can walk around in it which is very cool we've got a new sort of diffuser thing at the rear and this is the plaid badge sort of like a warp drive badge type thing and then we also have a frunk of course which you open by using that one which is also very big you can actually fit some proper stuff in there as well now other than that mainly changes to the interior and i have to say it is a really big improvement the build quality has improved a lot recently and you just feel like it's been built properly now you don't have as much like creaks and cracks and it doesn't feel like you're going to break stuff anymore so yeah really good you also get this massive 17 inch screen which is really nice i mean this is the best system out there hands down super big you've got google maps so you use this system instead of just using your phone in like basically any other car without carplay and everything is in the system so you have to use the system you can't you don't have any buttons anywhere anymore uh you've got a couple on the steering wheel and just the windows there uh but you know tesla is on a hunt to delete all buttons mostly it's okay some things as you know we prefer to have just like a button like the volume or your climate or your seat heating whatever some things are just better to have you know down here buttons knobs you can do that quickly in the dark whatever uh, but tesla just puts everything in here but i've shown you before the amazing things you can do with this system so you can play video games uh, while you're waiting to charge or just on your driveway you can also make music you can use the car as a megaphone megaphone hello megaphone <laughs> this is pretty cool hello yeah okay and you can even add your own sounds i just found out so if you use a usb stick with a directory named boombox you can use five of your own sounds so that is pretty funny and the megaphone is pretty cool but it is you know very gimmicky and i've shown you this before uh i really love this this is like this is like really insane the fact that you can do this I mean, you can spend some time in this car.
Okay, so I really, really like this because it shows that Tesla really thinks about how you use your car. Uh, they know you're going to spend a lot of time in this waiting for it to charge. So why not make that as pleasant and as comfortable as possible? So super smart, really like that. And they keep adding games and, and apps to it. They just, you know, they keep you entertained really well. Now we have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the joke steering wheel. No, that's a joke. It's called the yoke and it's basically half a steering wheel. And my honest conviction is that the only reason why they introduced this is because you sit in the Model X with this window up to like here. If you hold this, it feels like you're, you're piloting some sort of starship or whatever. I, I honestly feel like that's the only reason why they did this. Elon just wanted to feel like he was piloting a starship and it does not work. Um, yes, you can get used to it. I really believe that if you drive for a couple of weeks or months, I'm sure you get used to it, but it's just not going to be as good as a steering wheel. It's just not going to be. Uh, driving on a highway, it's perfectly fine, but maneuvering, you just don't have enough spots to hold it. It, it just makes it awkward. It, it really does. And uh, well, I think it shows that a lot of people were not really too happy about it because they are now offering a regular steering wheel as well. I think a lot of people were like, okay, we'll try it, but it does not really work as well as a regular steering wheel. Okay, so let's take it for a drive. Just hit the brake pedal, the door closes automatically. Now you can use your phone or the regular key or this card to operate the car. Uh, the phone works really well. So that is pretty cool as well. And the app works really well. They haven't changed that much in like 10 years. And I love that because it is super simple. It is very clear. It is easy to use. Okay. So driving the car. Now, another thing I really don't like about the yoke is the fact that you can't really drive it with one hand. You almost always have to use two hands, especially if you have to use the indicators because they are right here, there are buttons, but you can't really drive it one handed like a regular car. And uh, I think it's like a thing if you have your arm or your leg amputated, you have like phantom pain, you know, it feels like the leg is still there, but it's not. I feel like it's the same with the steering wheel. Sometimes I, I like try to grab it or when I turn and I let the steering wheel like come back to the center position, I want to grab it, like it, it runs through my hand and then I want to grab it here and it's gone. And it surprised me twice already. So you really have to get used to that. Otherwise, you know, just regular driving, it's perfectly fine. You, you don't really notice it. It's just like with low speed maneuvering that is when you're going to notice it i feel like and if you have to catch like a slide or a drift i i feel like that is going to be absolute mayhem and is going to end with a tesla on its roof in that field over there okay so we've got driving modes right here chill sport and plaid uh, Plaid, by the way, comes from the movie Spaceballs, which is one level above Ludicrous. So that is also uh, where Ludicrous came from. And this is like the most aggressive setting. Chill is super easy and uh, calm to drive, but Plaid is absolutely insane. So we're going to do a launch, like just from standstill, Plaid mode, no drag strip. That's pretty quick. That is basically what it used to be. I think this is like ludicrous mode in the B100D, right? Super fast, nothing crazy. So now we hit drag strip mode and everything starts heating up to give us peak power, you know, to give us everything it's got, to give us the fastest acceleration, that 9.9 .9 quarter mile, you need drag strip mode for that. As you can see, we've got a red drag strip indicator over there. So that means that the car is ready, heated up for us to do a launch. Now, Tesla claims 2.50 to 60, 2.60 to 100. Now we hit the brake pedal, full throttle. You can see preparing to start. So the suspension goes into cheetah mode. 
takes a couple of seconds and then it says ready to go which is now release the brake oh, and you get a warp speed image there and that is freaking quick as hell the only thing is quickest we've been able to do is 2.8 and I feel like that is a bit more realistic as well because 2.5 0 to 60 2.6 0 to 100 that doesn't really add up uh, that difference is a bit too small if I think and they also use a one foot rollout in that 0 to 60 measurement so normally the difference is bigger than that so I think 2.7 2.8 is more realistic if you just do a regular launch like this just hit the throttle you can feel that the power has to like build and then it's <laughs> it's really insane too but the difference is massive so with launch control 2.8 seconds without launch control 3.3 so that is quite a big difference and it really shows that this launch control mode it just throws everything it's got at like <laughs> the tires basically and tells it you know hold on here we go now that 2.8 0 to 100 we measured, we had a second draggy running with miles an hour and we did a 0 to 60 measurement in 2.5. So that was the same run, we did 2.5 0 to 60, 2.8 0 to 100. So it definitely adds up that uh, the 2.6 is just way too quick, you're not going to get that. Alright, so one thing I forgot is the driving, like the gear indicator basically. Uh, you've got park over there, neutral over there, and you have to swipe the little car to go back and forth. Doesn't really work, especially like on three-point turns or parking or again, low speed maneuvering. Uh, it's just a bit cumbersome. They are working on predictive stuff, so the car knows when you want to go forward or backwards. Uh, it works sometimes, so I think, you know, in a few months or in a year that will work even better. Now, 100 to 200. This is one of the things that Tesla really improved upon. Oh man, if you put your foot down, that was like 70 kilometers an hour. We do a measurement, 100 to 200. Fastest we've been able to do is 4.76, which is outrageously quick. That is insane. You're in like Audi RS7s with a thousand horsepower territory, uh, M5 with a thousand horsepower. It, it really delivers that 1000 horsepower. But the cool thing is, if you do it again, it's pretty consistent. The next run we did like a 4.78. So it really, they have really improved that consistency. It used to overheat every other run basically sometimes even during a run uh, during a top speed run we would get overheating notifications before we hit the top speed stuff like that and i feel like tesla have really worked on the car's ability to extract performance from it and to keep doing that without it overheating too quickly this is also very impressive by the way 270 on the speedo there braking so braking performance is not that bad but I can really feel you know at the end it starts to soften up a little bit but it's it's not too bad but the way it just keeps going to that 270 is seriously impressive I was expecting it to like level out a little bit more but it just keeps going oh man that is a that is a proper speed limiter at 270 kilometers an hour. I'm seriously impressed with that. Now we can also go for suspension in comfort. You can also use the advanced mode and you can change the comfort and the, I don't know what the difference is between handling and comfort, but, but you can change it soft to firm and comfortable to sporty basically. But I'm curious to see how comfort feels you've got some data here as well compression ride height but I have to admit oh the comfort setting is way better it, it definitely sends a lot less like jolting through the cabin that is quite good so if we hit the throttle now in comfort mode will you feel it squat more 
Yeah, you do. Okay, that's not bad. I, I have to say, build quality, interior quality with this carbon, aluminium, leather, everything looks really good. The panel gaps are, are properly done now. We've got a little magnet in this, which I really like. That feels super nice. We've got storage down here, cup holders, two wireless chargers for your phone. You, you have everything you need. It is such a clever car. And I can imagine for families, it, it is almost unbeatable. Especially, you know, if you have a fast dad. Uh, the Plaid has a range claimed range of like 540 kilometers so real world performance with 22 inch wheels 450 something like that um, if you go for the long range it's a little bit more 576 something like that and you have a dual motor setup instead of a tri motor um, so the difference is not that big it, it costs 20,000 euros or dollars extra to have this plaid I mean if you would like to scare your friends or nauseate your kids on a regular basis it is a pretty damn impressive car i would actually like to keep it at high speed for a while to see what it does so we're at top speed now it's very comfy it does feel like i'm piloting a starship Bumps here, very good. No overheating. It's still doing very well. We do have a bit of wind noise. Okay, so that was quite hard for the car. Quite a long time at top speed. Back into Germany now, full throttle. Back up to 270 kilometers an hour. We've got some rosers. Okay, so now let's do a 100 to 200 measurement. Here we go. It's a slight uphill. And we did a 5.1 second run earlier with two people in the car. And this was a six second run. Okay, so performance is decreasing. Let's do another one here. Slide downhill now to even it out. We don't have peak power anymore. What was that? 6.2, yeah. But we don't have drag strip mode anymore. So you can feel now that it becomes more difficult to extract that 1020 horsepower from it. Uh, the window keeps getting smaller, so that is still going on. But I have to say, it is way more consistent than last time. It, it used to be absolute mayhem it used to be horrible to do this kind of thing and i feel like now it's a lot better this of course still is a 400 volt architecture and uh, the porsches audis kias and hyundai's are using 800 volt now which should be more consistent but i have to say this is not bad big improvement So handling, we haven't covered that at all. So as I said, it's very heavy, two and a half tons. Steering wheel is not very suitable for this kind of thing, really isn't. You, you, it feels like I'm shaking the hand of a person who has no hands, basically. It's very, you don't know what to do. And you can see it definitely runs up Oh, it won't go. I don't think it will go 270 anymore. No, definitely not. Okay, so now it starts decreasing the power. It took a lot longer than before. So good job, Tesla. The thing is an absolute beast. And uh, well, it did not disappoint, which 
with a year of run-up and everyone hyping it and I was expecting to be let down but we were really not let down it is an absolute beast of a car so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, we actually did some proper testing today which is uh, quite nice so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe by clicking the big button you can also check out another video by clicking the one on the right or go to this playlist of reviews to check out more of those see you at the next one bye